and we'll um, get started uh, with the lecture today. Um, so today we're going to start the new lecture. Um, it's uh, one of the two main modeling techniques, Bayesian modeling techniques that we, we cover uh, in this course. It's called Bayesian hierarchical modeling. And I already asked you to watch the um, intro video that Professor DeLeu prepared for us. Um, um, hopefully you all enjoyed it and then got some you know, takeaway message of why um, doing hierarchical modeling is useful in some context. And for us, uh, in the lecture time, I will get to talk about uh, hierarchical modeling uh, in a different context. Um, uh, but nevertheless, we'll focus more on how to understand the model, how to build up the model, and how to use JAGS to, to do the MCMC estimation. Um, by the way, I think Professor DeLeo's uh, project was also done in JAGS. So um, I could also, I think I had uh, some of his old Jack script um, from before that he used to actually uh, run the model that he talked about in the video. So I will post that on Moodle later as well uh, in case anybody wants to take a look at how you know a complicated model can be done using Jacks as well. Um, in our case, we will build up uh, the hierarchical modeling strategy uh, from ground up, thinking about why we want to do it in the first place and how to construct it using, um, using our familiar normal model and then eventually using JAX um, to write JAX script and then how to use JAX to do the MCMC estimation. So let's see how much we can cover today. And um, I also want to give you the time to, to work on lab three a little bit as well, uh, in case some of you are still working on it, uh, which is due sometime next week. Okay. Um, so we're going to start uh, with an example. And um, it's a data set of Korean drama ratings. It's actually from one of uh, a student from previous years taking this course uh, from her um, course project and it was really interesting. Um, so we're gonna use that. And then we'll have um, discussions about how to approach modeling when you have observations in specific groups. And then I will introduce how to actually do a hierarchical model with a two stage prior followed by how to do JAGS and then one extra exercise for you to, to practice. Um, so for these uh, data set, um, uh, as you probably know, and probably even more so nowadays, because if you go to Netflix, I think a bunch of um, Korean dramas being posted and all that. Um, so uh, it is popular, I guess, in Asia and other parts of the world. And I won't try to pronounce that because I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it means a uh, Korean wave uh, itself. Um, and the drama is streaming in the US, like I said, Netflix uh, even more so, and I think other other things as well. Um, so maybe some of your fans as well. So hopefully this will sound interesting um, enough to you. And for us, or for this particular data set that the student from previous years uh, were able to collect, um, were curious um, about how the K-dramas have actually been rated in Korea itself. And um, this data set is actually about the ratings themselves. Uh, for a particular period of time, I think it was 11. Uh, Korean dramas collected from 2014 to 2016. And uh, specifically in this data set, um, there are a couple of information as you can see about those dramas. So first of all, there are three main producers or companies and each drama is broadcasting one of the four different times of the week. So you will see that uh, in this data set, which is also posted on Moodle as a C CSV file for you, you will see that each data, uh, each data point or each row or each observation, of course, has the rating itself, but also the associated uh, information about which producer um, uh, it has and also in what in one of the four times of the week when it is uh, when it's broadcasted. Okay, um, so that's the basic background itself. And if you take a look at uh, the data set, uh, like I said, there are 101 from the previous slide, 101 K dramas in total. Uh, but if we zoom in, looking at a uh, particular broadcast uh, company, uh, KBS, Korean Broadcasting System, uh, there are 33 uh, KBS dramas over there. And here I show you the top few um, or the first few uh, records uh, in that data set. So you can see that you have the column, the drama title, uh, the schedules. So like I said, they have four different broadcasting schedules. Uh, one uh, is coded for Mondays and Tuesdays. Two is coded for Wednesday and Thursdays. Three is coded for Fridays, and four is the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, you will see the rating itself um, um, on, on the third column, and also I think the date of, um, of the first date of this drama being um, 
broadcasted. Um, so this is how um, the, the data is coded in the CSV file. And um, later on, like I said, there will be exercise for you to practice. And I think it's useful to always look at how, how the data is structured uh, in the first place. All right, um, so like I said, uh, trying to um, get the drama first, load the data, uh, and then only look at producer equals to two, that refers to the KBS um, drama itself. And we also make sure that we're treating the schedule variable as a categor uh, categorical variable, so we'll be able to do visualization and summary about it. Uh, so first of all, if I'm looking at only the KBS dramas over here, okay, we're looking at the ratings itself. And we're looking at rating by schedule. So this is um, a uh, density plot, as you can see. Remember, there are four different schedules. We're doing density plot of the ratings across the, uh, across the board. And you can see some interesting pattern. Hopefully, uh, that makes um, this interesting to you. And I would like to maybe actually take the chance to, to have you in the breakout room to chat with your neighbors. So, uh, by the way, because we're doing this um, on Zoom, so you probably want to download the slides, which is also from from our Moodle page. This is slide number seven. Um, so once I put you in the breakout room, you won't be able to, able to see my screen, but this is slide number seven. And um, the question for you, oh, let me show you this, the graph here, as well as a, a basic summary, okay, of, uh, of the rating itself by schedule. So you can see that in this table, we're looking at the minimum, maximum, um, the mean, the standard deviation, also the sample size a little bit. Um, so it's always important to explore the data before we actually do anything about it. So I would like to take the chance to ask you to go to a breakout room uh, to discuss with uh, people in the same breakout room what your takeaways at the first uh, glance of this density plot sharing, you know, by schedule rating, as well as anything that is interesting jumping out from this summary table. And um, once we are done with that, I will, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it together before we move on to talk about the modeling strategy. Uh, so I will just do random uh, assignment for the breakout rooms and I will ask you to come back in about three minutes. Like I would rather use those classes towards that than the birds major. But if I needed to, I could go connect with someone. Yeah. Um, Back. And um, all right, so anyone wants to make some quick comments before we move on um, about the modeling? Because I think uh, the plot itself, as well as, like I said, the summary uh, table uh, shows us some interesting features, I think, about different, you know, ratings of different schedules. And um, based on what you observed so far, anything interesting jumping out that you think we should pay extra attention as we move on? So you can just unmute and go ahead. Sarah, I, I see your hand, but just go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, well, we were, I mean, well, we were just trying to think about what the rating scale was. We didn't really know what those numbers exactly meant, um, but we noticed that the Friday one, the blue line mm -hmm. is like very peaked. Uh, well, the dent, there's like a lot of density in the, like on the left-hand side, but there's also only three samples. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks, Sarah. And also thanks for reminding me. So I think the rating uh, is, um, well, rating of the, the drama in, in Korea itself. Um, I don't know too much about exactly how it was uh, constructed, but I think based on what we see over here, it's probably ranging from 0 to 0 0.3. And I would imagine um, the higher, the better, or the higher, the, the better the rating itself. Uh, and I agree with uh, Sarah and uh, all of the comments as well, um, because if we look at the density plot here, uh, it's clearly that um, it's more peaked for number three, which is the Friday schedule, and they're all kind of low rating if lower number uh, indicates lower rating. Uh, whereas you can see that for the other three, especially between one and two, I think that's the Monday, Wednesday, and then uh, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Fridays, they are kind of like uh, comparable to each other. And, uh, and then number four, which is um, sun, uh, Saturdays and Sunday, I think it's clearly that it's showing a uh, much more flatter density plot um, over here. And if we look at the sample size, which was correctly pointed out by uh, Sarah earlier as well, uh, the Friday schedule is kind of uh, special, I guess, or standing out uh, from, from the four scheduling over here. Uh, not only the sample size is small, the standard deviation is quite small as well, which is 
you know, matching what we saw earlier about the density plot and everything. And overall, it's, it's just low uh, rating overall for, for schedule number three. Um, whereas the other two or the other three, I guess, schedules are relatively comparable, especially between one and two. Okay? So I guess the, the takeaway, the biggest takeaway over here is that, well, there are definitely a schedule specific feature that is going on. Right? And uh, that prompts us to think about, well, how can we uh, build a model uh, or a selection of model, uh, models together that will be able to um, will be able to uh, capture, you know, information that is being shown in the data set. Um, not only that, the uh, ratings can be quite different across, you know, the different schedules. And we also want to capture, you know, any kind of information within each schedule that is making things pretty unique. So let me check this um, message really quick. Uh, but this, uh, okay. I don't know anything about this in particular, but a very fast Google search returns. A Nelson rating goes by percentage in regards to a national television show, uh, such as something on NBC. If a program receives a Nelson rating of 15, means that 15% of the public participating in, okay, sorry, in the rating service watch the television show. So I think the ratings are proportions of total viewers. And then Aiden also follow up. So maybe the low ratings on Friday are because people would be doing other things. Uh, I, I guess so, <laughs> especially now COVID is hopefully going away and all that. Um, Anyway, um, that's uh, thank you both, uh, Koji and Aiden. Um, so apparently I, I should prepare a little bit better, uh, but I, I think this is about percentage and all that. And then I think our previous understanding is still uh, correct in the sense that the higher the rating, meaning that more people are viewing and maybe referring to that is more popular or something like that. Okay, um, alrighty, thank you both. So that's the example itself. And like I said, um, always important to explore data analysis beforehand because anything uh, jumping out probably gives us indication of how we actually want to conduct the model uh, strategy itself. And the takeaway message, like I said here, is that it seems to make sense to do a four specific or schedule specific um, model. And I already wrote down normal models, mostly because the rating is a continuous variable. Um, so we will be uh, building based on building the new methodology here, based on what we already know about the normal model, which I think is our second chapter that we covered. And then we develop a little bit more in give sampling and all that as well. All right. Um, so 